Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Today we're going to talk about jeweling. Jeweling is one of my favorite techniques for metal finishing. It has a very cool and unique look to it and it's super easy to do. You may recognize jeweling from fire trucks where they use it to mask the scratches that would normally be incurred when they're using the equipment and it's also very common on firearms. Contrary to popular belief, it's not just an aesthetic process. For instance, with firearms, the, the process of jeweling can actually help scuff up the surface a little that can help it retain oil better than a polished metal surface. The process of jeweling is just overlapped circles and you do this with some sort of an abrasive tool. If you're working with large projects, use large brushes like this paint removal tool or the scotch Bright brush. If you're working on super small parts, you could use something like this quarter inch abrasive bit. It could be running a drill press, even a hand drill or a Dremel. Again, you want high RPMs. You could even use a pencil eraser. This works fine. If you're using a smooth tool, like a piece of rubber, you'll need some sort of an abrasive. I personally prefer this 90 grit lapping compound. I've also got some clover compound here that is about 120 grit. You can even use toothpaste. Yes, toothpaste is an abrasive. Yes, it will work. If you're jeweling a really hard material or you wanna make a really deep scrape, use a tool like this. It has thick wire brushes. I use a zip tie to keep the wires from fraying out and so that the tool holds its circular pattern. I jewel a lot of aluminum and my go-to choice is to use the 90 grit compound and I stick a piece of half inch 60 durometer rubber rod inside a drill press. This bar costs about uh, five or six bucks and it should last you a lifetime. Just cut a piece off and stick it in a drill chuck. Let's go ahead and jewel this. This is a piece of 6061 T6 aluminum. I've milled the surface off. You can see there are some toolpath marks. I'm going to use some 600 grit sandpaper to smooth this down. The smoother the surface you start with, the better your jeweling will look. Okay, we've got this sanded down. Let's head over to the CNC mill. I've got the part clamped in the vise on my CNC mill. If you're a longtime viewer, this may look a little different, and that's because I've got the mill, table, and vise, everything covered to keep it protected. This uh, compound we're going to use is nasty stuff. You do not want this getting anywhere in or near the, uh, your machine, the, the vise, the uh, fixture table, uh, the mill bed, etc. I'm just going to use a toothpick and apply some of this stuff onto the surface of the part. I like working with this 90 grit stuff because you want it a little bit thinner. You can always mix it down um, with something like a motor oil, whereas if you've got thinner stuff, um, 120 grit or 220 grit, you can't really make it thicker. I also like this particular type. I got it from McMaster because it doesn't tend to fly all over the place. So I wrote a little G-code program. We'll take a look at the code right here. Um, it dwells for five seconds. Uh, every time it is effectively a drill command. Okay, part is done and take it out of the vise. Now, the one downside but, um, of using this type of an abrasive lapping compound is that it's uh, oil based, so it, it's kind of nasty stuff. It doesn't clean up really easily. You tend to you have to use like a paint thinner. You also want to be careful not to wipe it all over the face of the part now, or you're just going to be scratching into the nice circles you just made. So, I'm going to take a toothpick and try to just sort of coax off the top and the sides of it. And then under some running water, I'll, I'll wash off the rest. Okay, there it is. I'm very happy with that. But if you're saying to yourself right now, wait a minute here, I don't have a CNC mill, do not worry. Let's take a look at doing this on the drill press. Jeweling on the drill press works just fine. The CNC mill does have a few advantages. It's obviously more accurate in terms of creating the pattern. It's also more consistent with the pressure on each uh, swirl pattern. I'm just putting the part in a vise. Um, what you should do if you'd like to get an accurate pattern, particularly over a large piece, is to clamp a straight edge down, preferably a ruler, and use that straight edge with distance markings 
to more accurately measure your crossover. So just like on the uh, CNC mill, I'm just gonna spread some grit over the part here and then we're going to jewel it up. If you're using a drill press with an adjustable speed or belts, you'll wanna run this on the highest setting possible. Let's flip it on. Again, let's use our toothpick to take some of the excess off. And I'm going to go clean this off with some water and let's take a look. And it looks great. As you can see, the pattern is perfectly fine. The swirls look just as good as normal. Uh, it does take a little bit longer on a drill press, a little bit more patience. And like I said, clamp a straight edge down with a ruler so you can measure most accurately. But uh, again, a quick and inexpensive way to put a really cool surface finish on your parts. That's all, folks. Thanks.